Man, perspective is a motherfucker. Man, I've been traveling for like the past two, three weeks. Europe, Middle East. I uh, was in Egypt yesterday. Just got out to Amman, Jordan. And now I'm out here at this calisthenics park in Amman, Jordan. Man, I have not had access to a pull-up bar in probably, shit, I think like 10 days or something like that since I left Germany. And man, you really don't know what you got until you don't got it anymore. You know what I mean? Like a pull-up bar for me in the past 10 days has been more precious than, you know, gold or diamonds or whatever other type of precious metals they got out there. And uh, man, it just gives you perspective when you don't have certain amenities. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes I think that a lot of the times when we pick up gems in life is usually when we're kind of at a, I wouldn't even say rock bottom. It's not rock bottom. It's just, we're just at a place of uncomfortability, or if that's even a word, just being uncomfortable, being outside of our comfort zone. My comfort zone is always having access to, you know, calisthenics parks, pull up bars, parallettes, whatever it may be. And recently I just haven't had any of that. So I've been having to get it in however I can get it in. And now that I actually have a calisthenics park at my disposal, even though this isn't even the best calisthenics park, if you guys notice right here, the dip bars are like super wide. You can't even do dips on them. Same with these ones. You can't even do dips on these dip bars, but I'm just using them for uh, handstand pushups. Pull up bars hella low, but it's all good. It's equipment. So just be thankful for what you got. And that goes for any aspect of life. Egypt, I did some research actually. And funny thing is I did research on a bunch of different countries just because I kind of saw how the way of life was out in Egypt and how people are kind of, I would say like money hungry to a certain extent, but not necessarily in like a super disrespectful way. I would say they definitely are very pushy and trying to sell you things and different things of that nature. But the average GDP, the average income per year, I think per family is like 3,800 bucks. So you got to think about it. If you could come in from a country like America or Britain or any of these other countries, you know, I, I don't know what the average income is in America, but I could guess that it's somewhere around like 40 to $45,000 per year or something like that. I don't know what it is in England. I really don't know any statistics, but I know it damn sure it ain't nowhere near $3,800 a year. So we just gotta be thankful for what we have and also understand that we don't need as much to live a good life. Like other people are living great lives. They're content with what they have. I wouldn't necessarily say content is a good word, but they're satisfied with what they have, even if they're trying to strive to get more and they might not have as much as we have. So when you put yourself in kind of like an uncomfortable situation and you start living in a different area or traveling around the world, you'll kind of see that some of these amenities that we're, we just take for granted, they're not amenities that other people have. As a matter of fact, it's like if you have the bare necessities, the bare necessities in the United States is like living a life of luxury in a lot of other countries. And, you know, calisthenics parks is another thing. It's like sometimes we might be living in an area where we have an abundance of calisthenics parks. We take it for granted. You know, we skip out on training days because we think that we can just go do it tomorrow. But, you know, when you get into a situation where they have absolutely no calisthenics parks like Egypt or very little calisthenics parks, maybe like like this uh, city, Amman, Jordan. And this is like a major city. I think it's the main city in Jordan. But when you when you get into a situation like that, you start appreciating the little things in life. And, you know, you kind of start seeing what your character is made of, too, because some people just can't survive when they don't have the luxuries that they're used to in America. They don't have the luxuries that they're used to wherever they come from. And they just can't cope. It's like they need the materialistic, they need the materialism or they need the uh, luxury lifestyle or they need, you know, certain amenities just to have happiness. And when they don't have these, you know, a certain lifestyle, their happiness goes through the shitter. And I think that that's actually a blessing of maybe coming up not as fortunate you know, I was talking to my homeboy G earlier today and we were just talking about how I feel, or at least I was telling him, I was like, man, I feel like we were born in a sweet spot. You know what I mean? Like as far as our, our upbringing, as far as where we came from financially, that we did have to go through some struggles, but we didn't grow up dirt poor. You know what I mean? But we came from an area where we seen people who were dirt poor. We came from an area where, you know, we weren't damn sure weren't rich 
by any means growing up, but we also were exposed to certain things that maybe some other people weren't exposed to. We were, and G had kind of made a good point. He's like, growing up poor in a rich country gives you an extremely great perspective and it makes you extremely relatable no matter where you go around the world. And I think a lot of Americans, uh, black Americans in particular, kind of have this perspective. It's like you grow up poor in a rich country, you grow up um, maybe looked down upon in a society that the rest of the world looks up at. And when you go to other countries, people, you're more relatable to the average person, the average global citizen, I'll say, than maybe a white American or maybe, or I wouldn't even necessarily, I don't want to put race into it. Let's just say you're more relatable to the average global citizen than somebody who has grown up in a life of luxury because they can't survive without that luxury. But you grew up with struggle, you grew up with, you know, you might have grown up in a one bedroom apartment with, you know, three or four people, or you might have grown up in a four bedroom house and you had like three families living in there. Or you just might have grown up in a rough neighborhood or you might have just grown up in a middle class neighborhood and your family had the less, least amount of money in that middle class neighborhood. Whatever it may be, if you've grown th gone through some struggles, then you can relate to people all around the world. And also the blessing about growing up in America is that you're exposed to so much, even if you do come from certain areas because you have access to a lot of things. So, you know, I don't even really know where I'm going with this conversation, but I just wanted to chop it up with you guys about gratitude. And for me, this trip has kind of been, and this is actually a pretty dope little time of the day. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but they're doing a call to prayer right now. So anytime you're in one of these Muslim countries, it's like, I don't even know how many times a day that they pray, but they just have these blaring loudspeakers of these songs or these prayers and everybody just stops what they're doing and they start praying. So call to prayer is pretty dope. You know, it might wake you up in the, in the morning, but it's just a part of that travel experience so you know when you're in a muslim country or you're in a country that practices this faith this is what comes along with the territory you know you're going to hear these type of things it might wake you up in the morning but i look at it as a beautiful thing because people are devout here and they take their faith very seriously so it's kind of cool just to hear these type of things but like i said being in these different environments is always a great experience there's always so much to learn even when you have bad experiences last thing i'll talk about before i get off this uh this video is that earlier today i just got into amman jordan had to, the flight was probably one of the worst flights i've ever had in my life and honestly i could look at it and i can kind of laugh at the whole situation i was actually kind of laughing at the whole situation as it was going on even though it was super uncomfortable i didn't get any sleep last night i probably look like i'm tired right now just because i haven't gotten any sleep and Basically, we left Luxor, Egypt at 7 p.m. last night. <clears throat> Had a layover in Cairo, Egypt. The layover was supposed to be maybe like two hours. That flight was delayed a little bit. And then that actually, originally that flight was supposed to be like a one hour layover, but then it, the flight got pushed back for some reason. Or, and then it got pushed back like two or three hours. Anyways, we're arriving at like four, three in the morning, supposedly. We flew all the way, we got on a flight to uh, Amman, Jordan, flew all the way to Amman, Jordan. Visibility was terrible, had to fly all the way back to Egypt. Then we end up going to this town called, or this city called Sharm el Sheikh, I believe it's called. I believe that's the way it's pronounced. That is what it's called, Sharm el Sheikh, which is in the uh, Sinai Peninsula, out here, in, out here in the Middle East, out in Egypt. So we just basically just had to stop there. Flight attendants didn't give us any information. Customer service didn't give us any information at all. And by the way, this is on Egypt Airlines. I've got, I rate Egypt Airlines extremely low. That's probably the worst airline I've ever flown in my life. But anyways, customer service didn't give us any information. They just dumped us off the plane, put us in this cold ass terminal. Everybody was freezing cold. I was trying to get a little bit of sleep, but they didn't give us any updates the entire time. And then once it was time to like reboard the plane, I had to ask the, the customer service agent, I was like, man, what's going on? Is the flight canceled? He's like, oh, no, it's not canceled. You know, you guys are leaving two hours. Anyways, five hours later, people just start getting up, bum rushing the door because they're trying to get to the uh, aircraft. So then we ended up figuring, you know, because there's no announcements, we just got up on the plane or just got up with everybody else and got on the plane. Then it was just a whole ordeal. You know, it just was an uncomfortable situation. I, if you check my Instagram, Travel Stenics, at Travel Stenics, you guys can probably see I put a story on there if it's still up there. But anyways, guys, this is just 
the travel experience was was shitty but at the end of the day it also gives you perspective on like one of the things i kind of thought about during that whole time is like that flight from cairo egypt to Amman, jordan was supposed to be i believe an hour and 20 minutes we were in the air for about four four and a half hours before we ended up landing in Sharm el and then we ended up having to get back on the plane one of the things i actually thought about while i was on the plane was that even though we were like taking hell long i actually didn't even really know what was going on i was like man this flight's way longer than i anticipated it to be but one thing i thought about was like man i'm glad i ended up getting a seat in the back of the plane because i had a whole row to myself and think about how uncomfortable it would have been to be circling around uh the airport out here in Amman, Jordan, if I was sitting in a middle seat or something like that. So that was one form of gratitude. And then another, the most basic form of gratitude when you're traveling is just that, you know, you arrive to your destination safe and sound. That's literally the most important thing. And having that type of gratitude, that's the one thing I, I, you know, I always say a prayer before I get on a plane, or I say a prayer right when I do get on a plane about, you know, safe travels and just kind of where I'm at in my life and different things of that nature. And also being thankful for everything that I have in my life as well, but also a prayer for, you know, safety and all that type of stuff. So this is just something I do every time I get on a plane, maybe because I have a little bit of fear of flying. But just being able to arrive to your destination and travel safely is something to be grateful about. So gratitude is extremely important. Sometimes we're in uncomfortable situations. Sometimes we're in uncomfortable situations for extended periods of time. But the thing, the best way to look at it is that these uncomfortable situations don't do anything but sharpen our tools up. So just look at, you know, whenever maybe you're down on uh, down on your luck or maybe when your finances aren't as good as you'd like them to be. You know, it's just a time, a time period that's sharpening your tools up. It's just getting you prepared for what you have to come, because whenever your finances do get in order or maybe whenever you do get in the right situation, you're going to be much more grateful for being in that situation than you would have been if you never would have went through that rough patch. And that's the way I look at it. One last thing before I cut out. I know I'm rambling. I know I, I do this a lot in my videos. I was thinking about this as well earlier. And I was chopping up my homeboy James about this earlier. And it's a, it actually ties into finances. And that's the reason why I wanted to say something about it. It's like people will make an excuse not to do everything. Like I, people leave comments in the comment section about how I travel around. Or they might even hit me on a private message on Instagram or email me or something like that. And like, oh, how do you manage to travel around the world? And, you know, how do you you must be making a lot of money. I'm not, man, I'm poor. Like literally, I'm telling you guys, I'm poor. Like financially, I'm poor. I'm rich in every other way in life. I'm wealthy in every other way in life. You know what I mean? But as far as finances, I'm in, in American standards, I'm a poor man. But I still find a way. If there's a will, there's a way. And that's one thing I want to tell you guys. When it comes down to your fitness, if you guys want to get into shape, if there's a will, there's a way. You'll do it. If you're committed, if you're, you know, you know, committed to the process, if you stick with, if you got that seven days per week mentality, if you, you know, this is something that you want more than just, you want to get to a destination. It's a lifestyle that you want to live. Travel is a lifestyle I like to live. Callous things is a lifestyle I want to live. So I always find a way, even if I always find a way, even if the circumstances aren't good, I haven't had access to a callous things park, still been getting it in. And, uh, you know, my money situation hasn't been the greatest, but I'm still traveling. I'm still living my life, man. Shit, ain't none of this shit guaranteed. The only thing that we have is a present. So get do it, whatever you want to do in life and make sure that you get in. If you guys want to train with me, hit my email account because I'm taking my website down. Travelcynics at yahoo.com. Hit me up if you want to train with me one-on-one -on -one online. Hit me up if you want a meal plan. Hit me up if you want a consultation. Chop it up about travel, life, whatever. Anyways, y'all, hope everybody's having a great day out there. I'll holler at you guys later. Peace.